Today we're going to be building a software engineering resume completely from scratch. Now, of course, this is going to have my information on it, but try to see if you can utilize the process that I use to improve your resume as well, right along with me. So before we start designing the actual resume, we need to figure out what goes in the resume. So for that, what I wanna do is create a Google Doc and we're going to list out all of the things that either need to be in the resume or potentially can go in the resume if we have extra space. And now I don't want to waste too much of your time, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now and I'll check back in in a moment. Okay, so here's my notes doc. You can see there's nothing fancy about it. All I wanted to do was get some information down. So first of all, we have our main information here. So the first things we have are what we must need to include here, which is going to be my name and my email. So for the main information sort of at the top of the resume, that's what we have to have. And potentially if there's space up there, we can include some other information such as my LinkedIn, my GitHub, some online portfolio, if I had one, in my case, I don't actually have one, and potentially location. I'm always on the fence about this. If you're open to moving to other locations, then don't include a location on your resume potentially. Also, if you are applying to jobs not where you're currently located, then of course you should remove location from that resume, but you can have it if you want. Next, we will have my work experience. And again, we have must include and potentially include. So I must include my two main jobs that I've had as a software engineer and more recently, so my job at Facebook and at Algo Expert, which is what I do right now, and potentially include, these are some of my older jobs, things like that. So I was a teaching assistant during college, and then I have my internships I did, and even before that, I actually taught video editing classes, so that potentially could be on there, but that's going to be sort of the last thing if I really need to fill some extra space. Next, we have education. So things I must include is going to be the fact that I have a bachelor's degree, the major, and my GPA. So I'd say if you have a GPA over like 3.7, it's a must include. Above like 3.5, it might be in the potentially include, maybe even above a 3.0. Below that, I would probably not include a GPA. And then potentially include is going to be some coursework. So in my case, I usually like to break my coursework into informatics and computer science coursework. This is a good tip if you're somebody who didn't major in computer science but took a lot of computer science classes. It's a good way to show that you are competent in computer science, especially if you have a major that the recruiter might not know what it is. And then I also have graduation honors, so magna cum laude, so I could include this if I want. I don't think I necessarily need to. And potentially some other participation in things on campus, although honestly, I didn't do all that much. Next, we will have technical skills. So I think must include are going to be like primary programming languages that I work in and also frameworks. So in my case, JavaScript, Python, and Java, as well as React. So those are sort of the things I know the best and that I would be most confident working in. And then potentially I can include some other information. So some languages and frameworks that I'm knowledgeable about, maybe I've worked in them before. So I listed out a few of them here, as well as some other tools, things like Git, Bash, some testing frameworks, things like that. But then we also have other experience. So this is where I might put things like projects or things like that. And I don't think anything necessarily goes and must include here, at least for me. I have a decent amount of work experience at this point that sort of speaks for itself. So I don't know that I need projects on my resume, but if there's space, I will certainly include them. So I think potentially I could include this YouTube channel here, as well as I could include my capstone project, which was a pretty big software engineering project and potentially other projects I've worked on, such as ones I've done at hackathons and things like that. Okay, so now to create the actual resume. A lot of people like those fancy stylistic templates, but personally, I think they're more of gimmicks than actual strategies for making good resumes. So what I'm going to do is just take a very basic Google Docs template, and I'm going to update it to sort of fit my style and vibe and make my own template from their template. Okay, so here's the resume template I came up with. I'm actually pretty happy with it. So at the top here, we have name as well as below it, email, LinkedIn, and GitHub. And then below that, I have work experience. You could also change this order based on what's most important to you. So for example, if you are a college student, then your education is currently the most important thing and it should be at the top. So here I have work experience and we have space for the company and the position, some bullets for each one, and then over here on the right, the time frame of those positions and these company experiences or the work experience should be in chronological order. And then we have other experience. So this would be for things like personal projects, the YouTube channel, things like that. Below that I have education. So we have the university and then what the degree was and space below it for the GPA as well as potentially honors. And then over here on the right in the same column as we have the 
timeframes for the work experience. We also have the time frame for the degree and space below that in this sort of table down here for the potential coursework. So I would have my computer science and informatics coursework right there. And then down here at the very bottom, we have technical skills. And I broke this down into a table. I like to put it in some form of table rather than just listing off a bunch of skills because I think it makes it much easier to parse. So in this case, we'll have proficient languages, knowledgeable languages, and then tools. Then over here on the right, we would list those out. A few notes about this template. So first of all, hopefully it should be scalable no matter how much information we have, just by changing margins up a bit and font sizes. Also, we want to make sure that the resume is going to pass an ATS scanner, which is basically just a system that lots of companies use to scan your resume into their systems. And because of this, we need to make sure that our resume is easy for a computer to understand. And the easiest way to do this is to simply copy and paste all of the contents into Notepad or Apple Notes or something very basic and make sure that without any formatting, you can still understand the resume. Okay, so I went ahead and filled everything in and here's the resume I came up with. It is currently too long, but again, that's not too big of a deal. We can fix that later. So first of all, we have my name at the top and then we have email, LinkedIn and GitHub. And below that I have work experience. I put my work experience first because for me, I think that's what's most impressive or important. So first of all, I have my algo expert job because that is my current job. And I added some bullet points below here. I'm not going to spend time on every single bullet point, but the general idea I went with is to start with some form of hopefully strong verb or something of that nature, and then sort of describe what I did. And then hopefully add some metrics at the end, if possible, not everything can have a metric, but I try to have them as often as possible. So for example, created a one of a kind product for learning front end development and studying front end coding interviews used by thousands of software engineers around the world. So this part at the end here is essentially the metric of this bullet point. So it says why this actually matters. And on that note, if you are studying for front end coding interviews, make sure to check the link in the description and use code Connor for a small discount on front end expert. Okay, so moving on, I then have my Facebook software engineering position and we have some dates here. And then I have some bullet points describing what exactly it is I did at Facebook. Again, I'm not going to read all of these on camera, but you can read them if you so desire. Next, we have my head teaching assistant position for UW Computer Science. I wanted to put the entire name of the department here, but it just didn't fit. So I went with UW Computer Science. And then we have the dates. And again, we have some bullet points. And then we have the internships as well. So I went ahead and just put everything in here. And again, we can potentially remove some of these if we need to, to make space. So I have two Facebook internships. The one thing I did with these is I combined them. So I combined them into one bullet point, even though these were two different internships. And I showed that with the dates over here. And then we have the left internship as well. And then below that I have other experience. So I put this below the work experience because I think it's less important but we do have content creator here. And I just put one bullet point there, created original software engineering themed content for YouTube and TikTok generating over 1.5 million total views. So shout out to TikTok for most of those views. So by the way, if you're not following me on TikTok, I literally never mention it on the channel, but I do have a TikTok. I'll link it in the description as well if you want to follow me over there. And then we have education. So this is my degree, University of Washington, Bachelor's of Science and Informatics. September 2016 to June 2020, my GPA and the honors, in my case, magna cum laude. And then we have computer science coursework and informatics coursework. So again, I think this is very important to allow recruiters to sort of understand what your degree was, especially having this data structures and algorithms right here at the beginning, because recruiters know that this is the most important class or set of classes for passing coding interviews. So it's good to tell them right up front, hey, I took those classes. I will be able to pass your interviews. And then below that, I have technical skills. So proficient languages and frameworks, JavaScript, Python, Java, React, and Redux. So those are sort of the stacks I'm most comfortable with and that I've worked in the most on a professional basis. And then we have knowledgeable languages and frameworks. So these are things I've worked in a little bit. I know a decent amount of, and I would be comfortable working in them, but I'm by no means an expert. And then we have some tools that I'm used to using. So Git, Bash, HTML, CSS, Linux, Jest, and Firebase. So to make the resume fit on one page, we have a few options. First of all, we can just make everything smaller. So we can decrease font sizes and decrease the margin both between paragraphs as well as between the paragraphs and the edges of the page. Alternatively, we can delete some content and realistically, I probably will end up using a little bit of both of these two techniques. 
And what I like to do a lot of times is keep that deleted content and sort of cycle through it based on what job I'm applying to. So for example, if I'm applying to a front-end job, I might add in some front-end bullet points versus if I'm applying to a more general software engineering job, I might remove some of those extra front-end bullet points that I added in. Okay, so here we have the one-page version or at least one of the possible one-page versions of this resume. So what I did is I just stretched it to be closer to the edges of the page and I made some of the fonts smaller, such as I made my name a little bit smaller. And also what I did is I removed a few of the extra bullet points, focusing on some of the older bullet points. So for example, I removed one of the left bullet points because that was a while ago and it was an internship. It's not that important. It really doesn't make sense that I would have as many bullet points for this internship in 2019 as I have for my current job. So that's a good way to think about things. The older it is, the probably less important it is for your resume. So I removed a few of those made things a little bit smaller. I also, for example, took the GPA and put it on the same line as the degree, which didn't fit with the larger margins, but with the smaller margins on the edges of the page that did fit like that. So just a few things like that. And I was able to get this all on one page without deleting too much information. So I'm pretty happy with how this turned out as well. And now the last two steps here would be to get some of your peers to review the resume as well. In my case, I have y'all in the comments, so do let me know what you think of this resume. Additionally, you should be looking at some of your peers' resumes to get ideas. And for that, watch this video next where I review some of your resumes.